Hello everybody! It's Lee Bamber from The Game Creators announcing that I am broadcasting live! <laughs> this is the Game Guru Max live broadcast number 20. This is where you get a little bit of a sneak peek about what we're getting up to behind the scenes in the uh, Game Developers Dungeon. Oh, it's not actually a dungeon, but sometimes it feels like that if you're literally chained to the keyboard 24 hours a day. Um, this time it's going to be a little uh, a deeper look into the user interface. We've been doing a lot of work on design in the background and specifically all the code that has been going on, say in the last seven days, have been entirely dedicated to um, upgrading the uh, user interface as we go through that design process. So without further ado, I want to show you a little picture and then go into the build itself. So I'll just show you this. Um, this was hot off the press even today. I didn't know about this 24 hours ago. Um, but it was a task on the list which was to come up with some colour styles. Now these haven't been approved yet. Um, <laughs> probably <laughs> this will annoy the internal team for actually sharing this. But you know, you want a sneak peek? Well this is as sneaky as you can get. These are current candidates for all the colour schemes that you can choose uh, for your editor. Obviously a lot of people like the sort of the grey. Or some would describe Dirk and Dinger, but some might like the lighter, light grey ones, or some might go fur out, fur out, hippie radical colours, red, greens and blues, and all the colours of the rainbow. Um, and the good news is, as you see on these screens, those little three panels, and I'll show you a little bit later, you can customise them to anything you want. I don't believe these will be the final ten colours. I do believe, once we start releasing builds, um, the con colour configurations from the community <clears throat> will trump what we come up with, which is why I'm okay to share it today. Because I do believe we're going to take some of the best colour combinations that most of the community think, yes, that's a good choice, and replace one of these. You know, maybe nobody likes the sickly green <clears throat> colour scheme, or maybe somebody does. Maybe somebody likes the Hulk. Um, <clears throat> but that's the process. We're going to put it out there and then see what happens in terms of what colour schemes you come up with. So I'm going to run the build so I can show you how that's done, briefly. Um, and then go into some of the other aspects that we have um, gone through thoroughly through the design and through internal team approvals all the way through to making the code change and adding it to the interface so we can all play with it and see if it actually works. What works on paper doesn't necessarily work in code simply because you can't experience the interactivity of it on a piece of paper. So, you may remember from previous broadcasts, we actually have the edit settings. So you've got a settings dialog now, and you see uh, we've now got three for text colour, background colour, and a highlight colour. So, at the moment, this is what you would see if you just tick the dark style. But if I do enable custom colours, I now get some control over the colour. So, see the text is white. But if I wanted it yellow, well, you can make it yellow. You can now influence the background colours. There's a few different colour opacities, um, but they'll all base themselves off this general background choice. And the highlight is sort of the, the menu bars and the tab bars. So you can maybe, maybe you want a, a purplish theme, then you can set that one to sort of a in the same ballpark. And that's the idea. I mean, very, yellow and purple, very gaudy. Uh, but, you know, if you want these colours, then you can have them. Or, we give you a choice of ten. There's currently only three, but you're able to drop down and just pick ten of what we consider to be um, all-round good ones. And you can just simply pick from there and you never have to worry about choosing custom colours. And we've also added the tick box for transparency. Um, you notice you can see a little bit of the background through uh, this dialogue window, where well, you can switch that off so it becomes a solid colour. Um, so we decided that was important. Some people may not want your dialog box is to be semi-transparent, so we've added that capability as well. So that was the settings. Um, what I also want to do is show you a couple of things as you're creating. So currently we're in something called Paint Terrain, and as you can see, you've actually got a grid of uh, four by four, and you may be familiar with this, except for the fact you notice we've enlarged the preview, so you can get a really big preview of what that texture is before you say select it, choose a brush strength, and then paint it down into your world. Now I'm just going through this, I do want to do a little pause, um, not for technical reasons, I just want to see if anyone can post a, a message in our live chat as to whether anyone can hear me, and everyone can hear me loud and clear, um, thanks Steve Bovis, 
<laughs> I usually ask that question at the introduction. I didn't this time. I'm too excited to start talking about code and what we're going, what's happening in the software. Um, and I also fail to mention that if you do have any questions, and perhaps this is your first or second time watching the live broadcast, just post them in the chat, put a question mark on the end. I'm going to sca scan through those chats at the end of this little tirade and then answer as many as I can. And the ones I can't answer, I'll, an I'll actually post in the Game Guru thread where I'll answer every single question that was posed during this live chat. So that's your benefit for attending live. You get to put a question forward and I have to answer it. So please do ask your questions as I ramble on and I'll get to them very shortly. So the reason I was showing the paint train isn't necessarily of the stuff you've already seen, but for this feature, watch what I can do. Let's say I want that red here. See, I've actually toggled the places. I've dragged the red box right next to it because this is one I might use a lot or oh, I said this is carpet I'm never going to use carpet so you can just drag it all the way back there and now you push it out of the way so that's the idea you can actually drag um, the textures around in the order that you want potentially <coughs> excuse me in the order that you are needing for that particular terrain and the kind of things you're going to be painting on the terrain if you right click you've got a number of choices here and one of the things is you can change the names if you preview over, you'll actually see at the bottom there's a name, grass. But what if you have like five different types of grass? What if you want to customise it? Well, you can do that with change texture name. So this will be my, uh, say, my forest grass, which will be different from my uh, nuclear waste blasted bomb crater grass. So done. Now I actually can be able to uh, annotate all of the textures that are in my palette before I paint them onto the texture. So I'm really pleased that you can actually do a bit more management now in that area. And let's say we've painted this terrain texture down. We may want to complement it by adding some grass, which we go to the add vegetation. We can do that. I'm just going to zoom down a little bit, but not necessarily to show you the grass. I think you've all seen that before. But what I do want to show you is before in the previous user interface, there was a lot of tick boxes underneath. And now we've got a nice multiple highlight selector. So I've selected that. I can select grass between the heights of that and that and then I can paint that down very quickly very easily what you see is what you get editing and these highlighters you can just do the brown ones or you can just do the green ones or you can just do both so I just wanted to show that now we've got these nice multiple highlighters and you can highlight everything you could go absolutely crazy you could even add some flower that you've uh, created yourself as an image you can give it a name so my flower uh, for lava whatever you want to call it and now you've actually got that one as well so when you paint that down <laughs> you're painting an absolute splodge but if you actually go closer you'll see it's actually made up of literally everything you've selected so that's the idea of multigrass and, and I like saying that multigrass if you want to know why I like saying the word multigrass you're going to have to watch all the live broadcasts <laughs> and then find that episode where uh, we talked about multigrass. Um, so that's multigrass. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few more things and then we'll get to your questions. Add. Remember before it was just a plus. Now we're actually telling people it is adding something because uh, the plus was a bit ambiguous. And a tooltip which tells you um, what it does. We've even got help adding entities which will be a built-in tutorial which when you click it opens up a video and a full, fully interactive step-by-step -step of exactly how to add entities into your level. So we're not leaving you stranded. You will get help every step of the way. This window will change, but I just want to show you one of the features we have approved and added. You may know that when you add an entity, you can select it and then drop it in. So I'll put one there, add another entity and put it in there. But what if you wanted to select multiple entities? Now, you may know already about the hold down control, but we've added a new one, hold down shift. So I'll hold down shift, so I'm holding down shift now, and I can click the first one and the last one, and I can highlight everything in a range. So it's not selecting individual ones with the control, I can select a range. And then you just press a button which adds all three to your library, and as you can see, they're now added here for you to drop into your world. Or if you hold down again, you can have many copies of it. So let's say you had 50 trees or 40 wall pieces for your castle. 
um, you don't want to do it one by one or go into there and hold down control and click 40 times. You can just click the first one and the last one. They all get added into your local level editing area and then you can just choose from that local collection and create the level you want to create. So these are things that have gone through all the approvals and now in the software, they'll stay in the software. They may get tweaked slightly as a result of the final development iterations and any strong feedback that we get when we release the builds publicly. But we're pretty happy with the direction we're going, the choices we're making and what the edit is going to be when we've ultimately finished all of these changes. So that's what I wanted to show you today. I know you would like to have seen more non-user interface stuff, completely understand, and I'm also itching to start showing you things related to models and gameplay and, and scripts and control and all that kind of cool stuff, because that really gets my fire going. But I think it's important we completely sort out the user interface, make sure it's super easy to use, super intuitive, no redundancy, lots of consistency, lots of help. Um, and I think it's an important step because that basically sets the scene for everything else you're going to do. Um, you know, without a good interface, creating great gameplay, the interface will get in your way. So you can't create that great gameplay. That's sort of the logic. And it seems like there is a natural flow as well. Um, and I'm going to show you more of the beginning. I mean, I'm showing you a bit of the middle right now, but at the beginning we've got things like an improved welcome screen and we have something else you may have noticed. I'm just going to mention it briefly. Back to Game Project. May not finally call it Game Project, but that might hint at something that uh, we're also working on. <laughs> Any veterans in the Game Gear community know exactly what I'm hinting at. Um, but for those that don't, please stay tuned for future live broadcasts. So now I'm going to switch over to the questions. Hopefully I've got some good ones. Hopefully some that are relevant to what I've been talking about. But it doesn't matter. You can ask any questions you want. Um, wow, okay, there's quite a few. Let's start up at the toppy one. Um, here's the first question. The first person to get in with a question, probably before I even started talking. Uh, will characters created in Classics Character Creator import into Max? And then um, Easy Game Development Tools customary 35 question marks added to the end. You know, I have to delete all them question marks when I transcribe this live chat into Game Guru Thread. So it's... I, one question mark is more than sufficient. I can see a question mark fine. And the answer, unfortunately, is no. Um, the old character creator was based on the idea that you had three separate objects that just happened to float in exactly the same orientation and position. Um, a body, a head, and a hat. And it was really inefficient. Um, you, it was basically three separate objects, three separate draw calls. Um... And there was a lot of artifacts inherent in having to control those three objects over all the different situations. With Game Guru Max, we thought, well, let's do it properly. Let's have a character creator that will produce a single model. A single model that has LOD, that has all its animations, but it can still have multiple textures. So you have all the texture resolution that you want. And that's what we created. So the character creator in Max is a completely different beast. And as a result, you will not be able to import the older cludgier, trickier Game Guru classic characters. Certainly like the characters like are just models that some artist has modelled and animated. Those will come across fine. Those are fine. It's just the ones you've created in the character creator for classic. Those are sort of like a hodgepodge glued together things and they don't translate well at all when they move to max. So I suppose that's the long answer. The short answer is no and no plans to. So I apologise if that was a kingpin for you. Um, and thanks, Synchro, for answering it on the live chat. <laughs> uh, but I won't be skipping questions that may have been answered in the live chat, because I think you do want to see what Lee thinks um, in his very long-winded, roundabout way of answering what could have been a very simple question. Uh, here's the next question from uh, uh, Madvis. When can we expect the beta for? Uh, there are no plan. There's no date planned for that release. The reason you're probably sensing the delay is we had an internal discussion about how we should be delivering these updates, and it got to the point we were delivering updates as two gigabyte installers every time we made a change. It didn't matter if it was a five byte change; we'd have to deliver a new update that was two gigabytes. Plus, the whole process of installing is like, well, then you've got to uninstall the old one, install the new one, etc., etc., etc. Lose all your work potentially. Um, even though the install is really nice, much nicer than it used to be, 
um, it still wasn't enough. So we have been working on an auto updater. And the auto updater does exactly what it says on the tin. The next installer that you will get will include this auto updater. And then after that, all you've got to do is run the software. The software will know that there's a new update. It will give you the option to update to that version. It will give you the option of reverting back to the previous version. It kind of does everything you'd expect Steam to do for you. Well, we've written our own. So now you'll get that auto updater in the next update. And what that means is, um, after that, when we do an update, it's super quick. We upload the files that we've tested. We upgrade the version number. The next time you run that software, it detects that, that new set of files and that new version number and asks you whether you want to upgrade to it. So that's what we want to release next. When that's released, I think updates will come along much quicker because there isn't that extra burden of having to prepare these huge installers that then need to be tested and uploaded. So that's why there's a bit of a delay. We want to make sure that the next one is one that will make updates much smoother after that and into the future. So here's a question right underneath. Um, this is from Jaybird Max. Um, <laughs> Was that deliberately named just for us, or did uh, you beat us to the max? Uh, I'm guessing an 8003 error following the path cannot be found error, can't launch GG Max, any ideas how to fix? Yeah, this will join a club of errors that I think people are still getting, even with the later betas. Um, and, you know, it runs on many people's computers, and then it doesn't run on certain systems. So we always look for systemic issue in that respect. It's like, what is it? Is it a bad installation? Is there some files missing? Are you in a right protected area? Have you run out of space? All these sorts of questions. And those questions have been mostly answered and asked in the Game Guru forums. So what I'd ask you to do is uh, post that question there. If you've not already posted it, if you've already posted it, or if you post it after this live chat, just post a link. Um, to me, just just get it anywhere that you know I am. I mean, my uh, email address, as everyone should know, is lee at thegamecreators.com. Just send me that link and I'll go in and I can do it first hand. But the idea is the answers are likely already there, or even with just the question polls, you've now got like tens of people who've probably been in the same situation and might have solutions for you, and you'll get those answers much quicker than waiting for little old me. Um, but off the top of my head, I don't recognise the path cannot be found, but it sounds like you don't have all the folders that you need in order to run Max. Or you're in a right protected area and a folder that was to have been created wasn't created. And remember, in the new Game Guru Max system, we actually write all the writable files into a separate area than the program files where the product is originally installed, as recommended by Microsoft. So there are going to be some challenges in making sure that that works on everyone's version of Windows 10, however it's been configured. Um, looking for net another question. Um, looks like there's some comments. Comments. Who said that? Question mark. <laughs> That's not a question for me. Uh, here's another question. If I import an old level into Max, if it has a lot of custom characters, it's kind of messed up then? Question mark. Sure. Your characters won't be there. All your levels, your terrain, um, your objects, your logic, your scripts, all that will be there. But if you added lots of characters you created yourself, they won't be there. They'll have left tone. <laughs> but that's a good thing. It means you can go into the new character creator, and it's just as easy to create characters in that one. And the characters you do create are much better. They look better, the higher polygon, the higher texture count, they lip sync, they animate better. They respond better to the new logic that will be putting into Max. So it's no bad thing at all that those old kludgy characters have left the building. Looking for another question, this is from, from Jim A. When will the Beta 4 release be available? See previous answer. <laughs> it's a pretty, I'm pretty sure I get that question in every live broadcast. And it's a fair question. Um, but maybe I should add that into the introduction just to save you a bit of keyboard activity. Um, so I don't know how many questions have we got down here? This is another questions. See, I want to make sure that everyone gets a fair chance to have their questions answered, and I don't really want to keep bombarding everyone with the answers from the questions of just one person. So let's just see if we can find uh, someone who has a question for me who hasn't asked before. Um, okay, uh, yeah, Synchro, you've got a question. How many undos will we have? 
I've been putting down 10. Um, I know one wasn't enough. I mean, one is great in an emergency, but you kind of want to say, oh, I've done a little bit of a wrong turn here. I want to step back through. Something like Google Docs has an almost unlimited undo stack, and that's all very clever, but that's all very simple with just text and some edits. Imagine editing an entire level and then be able to backtrack all the way through it. There are certain technical challenges there. So I've just been telling everyone who asked me that question, 10. That way we can create some sort of a static block of limited responsibility. It doesn't get too confused as the further back you go. And I think 10 steps back is the most I've ever done uh, creating stuff in various tools. So let's just say 10 for now because I'm comfortable with that number and it won't consume too much memory. Um, but if in implementing it there is sort of, oh wow, we can make it 20 or 50 or practically unlimited, um, then I'll let you know. But just think of it as 10 for now. This is just Lee's first stab at it. Um, looking for another unique question. I can always, obviously any questions I'm skipping, I must emphasize, will be answered in the Game Guru thread after this live broadcast has been recorded and put up in the forums. Um, here's a new question from a new user. Um, Ask Hat. Can GG Max support DIS? D I S S. DIS? What is DIS? DIS? D I S. I presume it's some sort of acronym. Um, that is what I will wiki uh, and Google later. And then if uh, if I figure out what DIS is, then I will answer it in the uh, in the in the Game Guru in the Game Guru chat. Here's one from Lusterian Mapping. What is the maximum resolution size of the terrain map? Mm. Well, you've seen this one. I'm going to just go into the things. So you can see what I'm looking at. See that? There's me a splodge of grass. Da, 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 da. This is just one terrain node. Just one node. This is the smallest node that we ever envisaged you'd want. Just enough to plop a few things down. But that's just one node. We have something coming called a multi-node system, which adds another one of these size terrains in any compass direction you want. And you can basically keep going. We've implemented something called virtual texturing and, and virtual geometry storage, which means you know, you're pulling the level data from the file as you're moving around the level. Wouldn't say unlimited, but very, very, very large. And I suppose the answer is, if this was based on your experience from Classic, it's not going to be a fixed terrain size. That was never useful to anyone. Some people wanted smaller terrain, someone wanted larger. Um, but just giving someone, right, this is a fixed terrain and you can't never leave the borders of it. If you want anything bigger, go to another level. Wasn't a satisfactory answer for most people. So now, yes, you can change the size of the terrain. Don't worry about the scale of it. You'll run out of years of adding stuff before you run out of space that you can create in terms of the terrain uh, map size. Here's a question for all, another new person from Shadow Viper. Hello, I have a question. The assets of the previous engine, GameGuru, that's classic, uh, can be used in GameGuru Max. Yes, absolutely. There's, there's two ways. You can just manually copy the files over, with the exception of character creator uh, objects, <clears throat> and you can just load them in. I mean, for example, this, this crate here. This crate was from uh, GameGuru Classic. It was used in the um, uh, big escape level. So it just came across very nicely, no problem. Another way of doing it is you can actually load you know, you can go into File and Open, and you can select a level from Classic, and it knows it's in the Classic folder directory, and it will detect that, oh, um, this is a Classic level. And as it loads it in, it also scans the Classic folder for all the assets that that level needs, and it pulls them across into Max as well. So with a single load, you can grab all of your, just the assets that you needed for that level into Max, which you might think is a little bit more convenient than just dumping everything into Max. Because remember, our assets go back best part of 10 years. And that's a lot of assets over the time. And the early assets were pretty low resolution, low polygon, and a little bit crude, and probably a little bit broken. So you don't really want everything. I think you just want the stuff that you need for your Max project moving forward, and then anticipate that you're gonna bring in new models, better models in the future. So I'm just checking out the clock. I do not want to go over 30 minutes, even though this broadcast was only ever intended to be 15 minutes. YouTube says don't make a video over 15 minutes long, and I constantly break that rule. But I'll do one more question, then you'll find the last um, 
the, the, all the, the, the question answers for these questions in the Game Guru forum. So let me just find the question after that. Who's going to get it? I'm not going to give the same person another question answer unless there's no more. Is there any more? Yes, uh, there is a question from uh, Steve Bovis at DLs. Direct link libraries. <clears throat> um, okay. So I presume that's an answer to the one I said before about what's a dis. Is that uh, the answer to that? Yeah. Uh, no, no, that was from Ask Hat. Can GG Max support this? And then further down, DLs is direct link libraries. Question mark, question mark. So I guess that's not a question for me. So fine, I'll go up to the next one. We need a real honest last question that is actually for me. Um, and I'm going to have to go back. The last question I answered was actually the last genuine one. So I'm going to go to the one before that. Um, yeah, that question was repeated. So the last question and the next at last question was just a cut and paste question. So I'm actually going to go back the other way up the live chat now. Here's one. This is from Easy Game Development Tools. And it's only used one question mark this time. Congratulations. <laughs> We've evolved. Does it autosave and recover a level when it crashes? Does it auto save? No. Does it recover a level when it crashes? Yes. That's uh, recover it is available in Max uh, in sorry in classic already. If you're editing and editing and da -da 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 -da, and you test game, test game, test game, when you click test game, it actually makes a copy of your level. So if in the test game or when you come out of the test game, something happens to the software and it crashes, you still have a record of that last test game. And Game Guru Classic knows that and then it reloads it in. We're going to use a similar system for Max, but as to whether or not we have autosave, that remains to be seen. There's certainly benefits to it, but of course, do you want your software autosaving without your permission? It could be we simply add it into the settings so you have an autosave capability, but we'll see. We'll see. That's a little bit further down the road. And I've just checked the clock and I've got less than one minute to go. So thank you very much for your attention this week. As usual, you'll get another one next Wednesday at 4 p.m. GMT, where we'll be able to reveal more about what we're doing in the design and the user interface world of Game Guru Max. So until then, I hope you enjoyed yourself and I'll say goodbye. Bye-bye.